All right, that was Prime Minister Manmohan Singh on his track record over the last 10 years. This is a special edition of Political Capital, and I'm Vivek Law. Joining me to discuss all that the Prime Minister has said, CM Vasudev, former Economic Affairs and Expenditure Secretary, Narendra Pani of the National Institute of Advanced Studies. Also joining me is N. Ram, Chairman of the Hindu Group of Newspapers. Gautam Chachoria, who's the Head of India Equity Research at UBS Securities. Let me come to you first, Mr. Ram. What did you make of it? It was like a goodbye not really a speech, but he seemed to be deflecting more than actually speaking, which is pretty much typical of him, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, that's a correct. I think that's a fair reading of the speech. Uh, he patted himself on the back, which is understandable. The election, uh, you know, general election approaches, but uh, some of the statements are true. I think the most true, the truest of them is that he has not enriched himself, done anything to enrich himself or. Well, it is absolutely true. There's no doubt about it. But other than that, on corruption, it was a very disingenuous statement that uh, corruption happened in UPA 1 and people gave them a term. Now, mm. the obvious comment <laughs> on that would be that uh, it wasn't found out at that time. And only when corruption is out, it's investigated and exposed, uh, do people react to it. So I think mm. it's a, a bit of a... It's not just a... It's, it's, a, it's a misleading argument and so on. But... Uh, Yes, he's 81 years old, so no surprise in his saying, uh, I'm not going to seek uh, another term. He'll hand over to his next prime minister, who's certainly not going to be from the Congress. That's guaranteed. Everything mm -hmm. we know, all opinion polls, every trend points to the Congress being out. Uh, and as for Rahul Gandhi, I think that's a cert. That, that some, I don't know what's the appropriate time, but at some point they will announce uh, Rahul Gandhi. That's what everyone expects. And uh, it will be a brave thing for Rahul Gandhi to take it up uh, at this point because the Congress has never been in worse shape uh, other than uh, during the, you know, soon, uh, uh, the election after the emergency. I can't recall the Congress being uh, in such bad shape, such pathetic shape, in, in fact. Uh, Mr. Ram, so uh, think, uh, did you... Overall, uh, yeah, all over the place, some of it true. Hmm. I think the bit, bit about poverty... The poverty line, I think, has to be questioned by people more competent than I, mm. economics, because uh, their definition of the poverty line, everyone knows, is uh, very, very minimal. Mm. Uh, so it's no surprise that the number goes down if you spend a lot of money. But uh, what is it? How many people are below the poverty line? That's the question. Mm. And so I think, uh, uh, understandable, I, I sympathize with the prime minister. Mm. Did you find a, a tinge of arrogance somewhere in the manner in which he said that I have no doubt that it will be a UPA3 government uh, and the kind of harsh comment that he made as far as Narendra Modi is concerned to say that he will be disastrous for the country uh, despite all that this government has done in the last 10 years and the anger on the street uh, for him to say something like that so vehemently how did you read that? Yeah, in fact, I, I'm traveling in a car, so I didn't hear him say that on television, but mm. now that you tell me that, mm. I think it's, uh, I mean, he, he should have certainly avoided it because uh, there's no credibility there. Mm. As for his comment on Modi, dead right. I fully share his opinion mm. that Narendra Modi being a highly divisive force for the communal program uh, will be disastrous for the country from a democratic as well as secular standpoint. 100% mm. right. I'm with the Prime Minister on that. But... As for the Congress providing an alternative, that's a joke mm. today. Final question for you, Mr. Ram. He said several times during his speech that historians, historians and history will judge him way better than the current uh, judgment call that is being made by the media and the opposition. He said this quite a few times during his speech and he kept saying history will judge me in a far more kinder way. Do you agree with that? I think that's a fair, uh, fair expression, uh, a fair claim to make because uh, he's been there much longer, and uh, today I think his reputation is, uh, is at its lowest. So it is obvious that history will uh, judge him kinder. But how kindly? That's the question. What, what is his role on uh, in, in corruption and uh, uh, his role in, uh, in relation to uh, you know uh, doing something about for the people below the poverty line, as he uh, is referred to often. So mm. How kind is that? It's arguable. But certainly, I think it's a fair claim, assertion to say that uh, history will judge him more kindly than, the, than we are doing today. Absolutely right. 
family because it can't get worse than this. <laughs> All right. Okay, Mr. Ram, I'll leave you there. Thank you very much. Let me go across to Mr. CM Vasudev, who's the former Economic Affairs and Expenditure Secretary, and of course, Narendra Pani of the National Institute of Advanced Studies also joined me. Mr. Vasudev, uh, would you agree, the question that I just posed to Mr. Ram, that he kept saying this several times during his speech, that history will judge me better, from an economic point of view, from uh, what, and he, of course, also kept saying that 9% uh, was the growth over the entire tenure of his prime ministership for the country, which is uh, in itself a record, according to him. Uh, how would you judge him? What did you make of what he said today? Well, you know, of course, uh, <coughs> history will judge him uh, differently than what perhaps people are judging him now. But at the same time, it really is ironic that a person who uh, is responsible for ushering in an era of economic reforms post-91, when he was lauded not only in this country but the world over for the bold steps that have been taken to change the whole contours of the Indian economy and reforms in different sectors and which really took India onto a higher growth path. Now the same person when he became prime minister 10 years down the road, the country is now at the same position as it was perhaps in 1991 or closer to that. So that is really the irony there. And I'm sure history will also take that into account that he certainly is, was a very fine finance minister, but perhaps you can't say the same thing as, uh, as, as being a prime minister. There are many people who are very good number two, but, being, but between being number two and number one, there is a vast difference, and perhaps he was not as good a number one as he was as a number two. So that is how I feel the history may perhaps judge, but at least that is what my impression today is. Mm. Come in on this, uh, Mr. Narendra Pani. What did you make of uh, what you heard him say? Was he deflecting a lot more than actually answering the real questions? The, the overall impression one got was of someone who didn't quite know what has gone wrong. Because uh, right through he was, uh, even if you take his argument that the first, all the corruption cases relate to, the, to UPA1 and the people voted for them or voted, uh, returned them to power, it could be interpreted uh, as a way of saying that, you know, what matters is the effects of corruption for the people and not the noise that's made about it. But by the same token, today the people have voted them out and are showing signs of voting them out across the country. And yet there's no, no uh, sense of what could have gone wrong, what they can do to get it right. There seems to be the sense of helplessness, which was uh, made him look back more on how history would see him rather than the present, which, uh, which, which is an interesting question in itself, but not one that uh, the Congress party will be looking f uh, forward to answering at election time. Hmm. Anil, uh, thanks for joining in as well. He's not known to be a person who gives away too much emotions, at least in his body language. But did you get the feeling that he came across as extremely helpless today? I don't think he was helpless. I, I've never maintained that in his entire nine and a half years, he's ever been helpless. He knows exactly what he's doing all the time. So, and today too, it was very visible. Any difficult or uncomfortable question, I think once when our Mint correspondent asked him, what was your worst moment? And then later another correspondent asked about your regrets. He said, I need time to reflect. I don't, I, I can't tell you off the cuff. But when he was asked about his best moment without flinching, he said it was the 2005 civil nuclear deal. So it gave us an insight into his mindset, his willingness to take questions that he was willing to answer. And uh, I think that's a great politician in him. And, uh, you know, immediately suffering from selective amnesia when it comes to uh, difficult issues. So I don't think he was helpless. He knew exactly what he was doing. And uh, he's handled the press conference the way he would have wanted to. Mm. He almost seemed to have come prepared with what he wanted to say, isn't it, Anil? He wanted to make two or three points. One was that he's not going to be the PM anymore, which I don't think was uh, much of a surprise to anyone. Everybody anticipated that. He wanted to, of course, pat himself on the back, 9% growth over a period of nine years, a record, uh, and, of course, talk about some of the schemes and measures that the government did, and that's where he left it, isn't it? 
Uh, that's fair enough because I think uh, just like we beat up the UPA for a lot of things they haven't done, I think a lot of the criticism is exactly on what we lost. You know, the, I would term this as the lost decade and uh, that is their biggest crime. But in terms of achievements, they do have enormous achievements up their sleeve. And it is unfortunate that this government never chose to talk about it. So the Prime Minister comes and showcases that. I have no quarrel there. What I have is with the fact that he did not answer more difficult questions which would have given us a sense about how he thought, how he drove this government, how he carried himself in these last nine and a half years. There were several moments, several times throughout the press conference, the journalists pushed him for these kind of difficult answers, but he kind of parried it beautifully. I mean, hats off to him. But the fact is, as a nation, we didn't get the answers. <clears throat> Narendra Pani, he also pretty much threw up his hands and didn't come up with any concrete reasons why the government had not been able to succeed in taming inflation. Uh, which was one of the biggest issues. He just said, yes, we've not really done uh, as well as we uh, thought we would do on that front or tame it. What did you make of that piece? You know, I, the, the thing is that this is a problem that's been building up not just during his term as prime minister, but right from the time his time as finance minister when they went in for a strategy of liberalization completely ignoring the agricultural sector. And if you can keep uh, 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 looking at that pattern, you have a, a problem of food hiding behind and bound to come up sooner or later. And when it came up, you cannot then control it just by controlling money supply and uh, thereby hurting the rest of the growth. The issue was really you had a problem of ignoring agriculture. It's been there for 20 years. And it's disappointing that even today he doesn't really uh, recognize that. Hmm. Coming on that one, uh, Mr. Vasudev, uh, on the bit about inflation, of him not really giving any concrete explanation. Yeah, but you know, I, uh, one would have thought that uh, he could have used this opportunity to uh, delve a little bit more into the challenges that his uh, government during the 10-year period, what type of challenges they faced, what issues they resolved, what are the unresolved issues. Of course, he did say that one of the unfinished items is the um, taming of inflation, but how he's doing it, what measures were taken, what did not succeed. I think he was a little short on any of those economic policy, economic reform related issues. He did not give any idea what is the unfinished reform agenda which he would have liked to pursue during his 10 years period. and how much has not been done and how much has been done and how much he hopes will be done in the next four or five months. I think he didn't give any idea of what the economic policy challenges that the government has faced. And we did not get any idea of what are the reforms that he wanted to do, which he was not able to do. So other than saying that he would like in the next four or five months to see that the growth process is sort of revived, how it will be revived, we don't know. And he, of course, there were some good things that have been done, but he did not talk anything about the interplay of monetary policy, fiscal policy. After all, the inflation problem, a lot of the uh, problems lie at the door of the fiscal problems that the government is facing, which has indirectly then constrained the hands of the Monetary Policy Authority, that is the Reserve Bank of India, to pursue a little bit more of a growth-oriented monetary policy. So these are the challenges which are there, which I think he could have used this opportunity to tell the people that what he has done and what more needs to be done so that the twin challenges of taming inflation and reviving the growth momentum, how they can be met. So all in all, I found that his, the performance on this front was pretty disappointing, and he did duck many of the important questions, many of the critical questions, by either saying that he has not reflected on that or he has not had time to do that. And so very sort of routine, bureaucratic type of responses were there, which one did not perhaps expect or does not expect from from a prime minister who is supposed to be a little more big picture, visionary type of a view. So it is all lacking in that sense also. All right, gentlemen, we leave it there. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us here on The Political Capital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.